talking about music, it seems like there was a little uh, skipping of an important moment in which I think there was a handing off of one genre and maybe one generation to the next. And I'm talking about late 60s, early 70s. If you're in New York City, you hear Malcolm being played over jazz music, right? My cousin would play Malcolm, you would hear his voice continuously. And in the early days of hip hop, I'm talking about the mid 70s, you hear Malcolm in the parks being played over breakbeats. And the interesting thing is that his speeches that most people got the records from was on Paul Winley Records, which put out early breakbeat records. So you would go down to Harlem, 125th, and you would get these breakbeats, and then right alongside on the wall, there would be these various speeches by Malcolm that you would also get, and people would rock them in the parks. The other interesting thing is that many of the early hip-hop jams were at the Autobahn Ballroom. Grandmaster Flash and all these people were talking about the 70s before, Rapper's Delight and all that. Most people were going to the Autobahn Ballroom and that's where these early hip-hop gigs were going on. Now I'm not sure if people knew the full impact of Malcolm and what that meant in the way that we're discussing it today, but I would argue that he had a strong presence in the early 70s going into the 80s, which is why you have a Keith LeBlanc doing his record. It wasn't that it came out the blue, it was that Malcolm's voice was heard for a very long time amongst the hip-hoppers to the point that he was on the cover of The Source because he was sampled so much. Now, I don't know where things are now, but I definitely would like to get your comment on that because it seems like that's missed, that this organic exchange of information, Malcolm's presence way before radio or anything is something that's going on, uh, at least in New York, and, and, and becomes his currency, as you were pointing out, that allows his message to get all around the world into multiple generations of people. You're absolutely right. Uh, the earliest references start in the early 70s with Africa Um Yeah, so uh, I absolutely agree with you. And then, and then Keith LeBlanc and, and others pick it up in 1983. And in, in the 90s, um, you know what happened, and then it goes global. But I'm just saying that his presence was always, like you right. heard Malcolm, forget that body, you just heard Malcolm in the parks. If you go to New York today, if he was on a street corner, you would hear his speeches being rocked in a park, and I think that shouldn't be lost, that maybe it's older generation, but maybe it's a sense of power, but this was happening organically. It's ongoing to this day. Malcolm is still the sonic background. Yeah. And, I, and I think, it, look, he's the ultimate underground figure. I mean, vis-a-vis -vis the civil rights movement, that is the underground. Malcolm X is it, it, the underground in the sense of the pitch battle, ideologically speaking, between two opposed viewpoints within that culture and the way in which Malcolm is forced uh, to occupy a certain space makes perfect sense as to why he would then be not only the sonic backdrop for the development and evolution of that consciousness, but be seen as consciously uh, the basis for a counter-revolution, a, a, a counter-dominant uh, rhetoric that is being accessed by these young people because his voice is there, his style is there. Uh, the point you made earlier about the relationship, which is a fascinating one, between even earlier jazz music and his style of speech. That's right. I think that's, that's fascinating to me in terms of the big band and in terms of what was going on because given later on what happens in jazz between big band and then what happens with bebop right. and the kind of uh, you know, tensions that are there. But I, I, I'll say all that to say because Malcolm, I think, still signified for so many people the pristine and pure expression of an underground aesthetic mm. or a prefigured aesthetic for hip hop before it goes commercial mm. where to retain his voice is to retain that authenticity. But I think your point is, is, is just so well taken. We have time for one more okay. question. Okay, uh, I just want to thank